What is going on everyone? The market is blasting to the upside, kind of like how it did back in the money printing days of 2020. In this video, we're going to go over what actually happened in the market today to cause it to run up this much this quickly. There are some stocks like Apple that are so close to making a brand new all-time high. SPY made another yearly high today, and uh, there's a lot of uh, money flowing around in some very big ways. So let's get right into today's video. Tom, we have some great setups for today, and we have a whole lot to talk about. Yeah, we definitely do, Mike, and that market continued to be resilient today. That's a big word I keep using lately is resilient, and ever since we broke that recent high of the year around 460, which was a major, major resistance, I'm circling it in blue here on the chart, we have seen some amazing, and I mean amazing uptrends to the upside like this move with spy here was amazing today mike uh, i cannot believe that the overall market ran up 1.38 percent i know that it's had moves like this uh in the past but just to see it happen intraday with the fomc event with powell speaking was fantastic now i know a lot of people initially off the bat they're gonna right away say tom and Mike, why did this happen? And the main reason, Mike, is pretty much because the feds are actually indicating now three rate cuts coming in next year. If we look at the FedWatch tool, the overall market's actually indicating now four rate cuts coming in next year. We looked at this yesterday and over the past few days. Look at March right here in blue. I'm circling it. There's now a 66% chance of a rate cut coming in March before today's event. It was actually set to start cutting in May. So now we're seeing the cuts happen even earlier, and we're seeing a lot of uh, four cuts, like I said, this year. One in March, one in May, one in June, one in July, then it pauses, and then another one in December. So quite a few cuts coming in here, Mike. I'm going to definitely be looking for the market to continue on this uptrend for tomorrow. We're sitting above 470 slightly, and if we start to break like 471 tomorrow, I think there could definitely be a possible uptrend. But, man, it's just so many stocks are overextended, but this is exactly why the market is so resilient. Yeah, so like the main thing is that, as we all know, over the past couple of years, uh, the Federal Reserve has been trying to slow down the economy because inflation has been so out of control. But now we're to the point where the Federal Reserve is kind of unexpectedly in a good way uh, being much more uh, easy on the economy going forward as they have indicated that, you know, we're going to actually start lowering rates before any of you guys even expected us to and everyone's like really I can't believe that and then everything's shooting to the upside so that's why we're seeing this crazy movement in the market right now uh, a ton of stocks are blasting to the upside and you know the main thing is that uh, you know volatility is here so like even if you were bearish in the short term or you're bullish what excites me the most and what should excite everyone else the most who's a short-term trader at least is when you look across the market right now we are seeing some giant giant moves in multiple different industries multiple different types of stocks and you know volatility is increasing which is you know the best thing you could ask for I know, right? And a lot of these beaten down stocks are some of the best ones right now. Some of my favorites, Mike, are like Disney. You know, we keep looking at Zoom and Square. They had pretty good... I know Zoom was actually red today, but they recovered up all the way. Square had a good recovery, ended up in the green too. So some of these growth stocks are still going, like DraftKings even had a great move up 2.2% with this. So even the growth stocks are keeping up. And look at my watch list on the left side of the screen. Like SoFi led the way up 12 percent peloton eight percent rivian eight percent coinbase 7.7 percent .7%, mike even bitcoin had a great day today if we go over to btc usd that really popped up one big thing i want to see right now is the yields because we keep talking about yields how high they've been lately and mike the 10-year yield has actually been on a huge run lately following a big big trend line and as of today's meeting and event we are now falling under the key trend on yields now i don't know how uh, how realistic trends are on yields but i will say it's been pretty damn consistent on the uptrend so far and now that we're breaking we might see this ye these yields start to come down a little bit more we're sitting right around four percent on the 10-year 
I wonder how low we might get in the short term, and this might help a lot of sectors in the economy, especially the housing sector. I noticed O, or Reality Income, a popular REIT, is really uh, flying up today. There we go. Now, another thing we have to talk about is a potential 2023 Santa rally. So here's the thing. The market is up a ton so far. And what's interesting is that normally in December, with data going all the way back to 1950, normally it's like the second half of December where most of the gains actually come from. So you could see that, you know, from day around 15 onwards, uh, the market normally blasts up. But then again, this year might be a little bit different because we're on day 13 and we're running like, like I don't even know how to describe it. You know what I mean? Like it's a... Uh it's pretty powerful. So either way, historically speaking, December and even more specifically, the end of it tends to be pretty dang strong. It really is right now. And Mike, I will say the overall market's been very resilient lately. We've continued to see that uptrend and it's running up very close to all time highs right now. We're within like one to three percent of that 480 all-time high on the spy but mike there's some actually a ton of fun setups for tomorrow and uh with a couple of them that i was looking at my first one is oxy man oxy and the oil stocks had a great day today if we look at the percentage at the bottom right oxy was up three percent and has a weak correlation to the spy but today it kind of ran up with the market right it was cool to see oil running back up like this and what i love is it's right at recent resistance so if it breaks 5750 tomorrow look at those calls i really think the oil stocks could start to come up off of these lows and crude oil is kind of around a key support too sounds great uh, a stock i'm watching pretty closely is slv and i actually talked about this stock in yesterday's video it blasted to the upside today it's up around four and a half percent and i think it has even more room to go that doesn't mean it has to be green tomorrow but going forward over the next couple of days and the next couple of weeks the risk rewards really good the dollar got crushed today which definitely helps sell slv on top of that there have been a a lot of uh, inflows with gold and silver anyway, so either way, there's a lot of good things working for it, but uh, I think the uh, risk reward with SLV is pretty good right now, and I also really like the extra volume that we're seeing uh, pump into this one as well, so I'm going to watch it pretty closely, and the best way to trade it would be to, you know, trade it in a way where it's like you can give this one a couple days to a couple weeks to actually play out. Yeah, and this is actually one of the highest volume days of the year so far. So I'm glad to see it moving up today, Mike. And man, it was really close to that long-term support around $20.50 to $21. And you really hit this one on the head over the past couple of days calling it out. I will say, though, that green candle today is uh, is something else. Holy crap, Mike. Like, silver had quite the day. The average move is only 0.92, and it moved up 4.46%. What a play. But with my next one, I'm going with MGM. It's, again, right at resistance, right around $44. If we're able to break that tomorrow, I will look at calls. Uh, like I said, it's sitting right around resistance of the week. And what I like about it is that it didn't, like, run up too much. It's just right at resistance, and that gives us a nice level to break above and these travel slash hotel stocks slash casino stocks have been great over the past couple weeks perfect all right well another one i'm watching is peloton so this one's a little bit uh, more crazy you can say but it was actually up nine percent today and we also had a big money trade with this one recently as well but you know with everything being said uh basically peloton is super oversold and with uh, the federal reserve being more easy with uh, monetary policy than originally expected that can really help some of these uh what i'll call bottom feeder stocks that have been getting demolished over the past two years they can kind of give them like a second chance right but either way between the recent big money trade as well as the giant surge in bullish price action momentum and volume today i really like the risk reward with this one in the event that this uh breakout fails you know maybe the stop loss is you know at like five dollars a share or so but in the event the breakout succeeds you know the profit target could be all the way up to nine dollars or even more I really like that stop loss close to $5. That's right where one of the recent supports were, and it's almost setting up like an inverse head and shoulders 
or in the old style of uh, trading, Mike, you know, like kind of like a W pattern in a way. You know, it looks really good as far as holding these bottom supports. So I love it. 8.79% today, looking really solid. And man, uh, these beaten down stocks have been great lately. I know we've been talking about Square, PayPal, and a ton of others. And it's cool to see them all uh, starting to recover up quite a bit. There we go. Well, with that being said, Tom, let's jump right into the momentum plays for tomorrow. And with the first one, we have PayPal to the upside. Yeah, it actually closed today. Very close to $62. So if they're able to break above 62, then eye up those calls. All right. With the next one, we have Citigroup also to the upside. Yeah, the banks were fantastic, and they continue today. Now, Citigroup had a high of day right around 49.50. So if they're able to break 49.55, look at calls tomorrow, but also be wary of that $50 resistance. All right, and then with the last one, we have Microsoft for both directions, and this one was uh, pretty stuck in the mud today, Tom. Like, the market blasted higher, but Microsoft wasn't having any of that. Yeah, the Magnificent 7 was pretty mixed today overall, and I saw Microsoft intraday had a huge support right at 373, and once they broke that today, they had a huge move all the way down to 370.50 just about, so if we see that break at 373, go ahead and look at puts. That'll be a great downside support to watch for a breakdown. Now, if we see a nice pop up above intraday resistance right around 375, then look at calls, but I will say though, Mike, uh, it was a pretty rough day for Microsoft. Microsoft. Hopefully they can keep going with the overall market. Yeah, there we go. So we have the downside level for puts on Microsoft. We have the upside level for calls. So keep a close eye on this one. But don't forget about the Citigroup level and then the PayPal level as well, both for potential upside plays for tomorrow. Again, they're only plays if they rip above the level Tom listed. But with that being said, Tom, let's jump right into today's big money trade of the day. For today, we are looking at ticker symbol C-A-L-M. And basically, this is a $950,000 trade on Calmain Foods. I'm sure a lot of you guys already know this company. They're like a giant egg producer. And uh, this trade is kind of weird. So basically what's happening is this giant egg producer, Cal Main, um, is having a is being hit by the bird flu, right? And basically, that uh, reduces their output and in turn increases egg prices. Just like in 2022, uh, when egg prices went crazy, so did this stock. Uh, ticker symbol CALM ended up running to the upside in a pretty powerful way. And at one point, they were trading at like $65 a share, where in the beginning of 2020, 2022, they were trading for around like $37 a share. So basically, when egg prices rise quite a bit, obviously, this company tends to do pretty well given that's what they sell. But uh, either way, we are seeing a big money trader here put 950 grand into the CALM 55 strike call options that expire on January 19th of 2024. So it's definitely one of the more unusual trades that we've uh, covered with the big money. But at the same time, you know, there's a real reason to, uh, you know, cause a potential run up here. And, you know, if egg prices do actually end up increasing quite a bit, this company does have a lot to gain. So keep an eye on it. Yeah, and I would think that they could continue to gain here in the short term. That was a great move today, up 10.31%. They ran above recent resistance at 52, like it was nothing today, after rejecting off of it just last week. So I definitely like that breakout move today, Mike. CALM, 950 k put into the 55 strike calls expiring in January. I do think that this can continue short term. The question is, right, the million-dollar question, how high can it get now 60 to 62 dollars has been pretty big resistance here in the past but then again there's also been a lot of price action very close to like 57 so those are a couple levels i'll be looking here in the short term but mike uh, i love the play here calmain foods uh it's it's definitely interesting but i actually like playing these food companies you know they're actually pretty good whenever you find good patterns with them and with calmain I mean, that's a great, strong, negative correlation of the spy, negative 0.74. We normally don't see a negative correlation that strong.
There we go, and if you've been looking at the market lately and seeing all this crazy movement but have been kind of confused, definitely check this out. So Bookmap does a great job at showing you exactly where the buyers and sellers are at. Basically, without Bookmap, you'd have no idea uh, basically where the buyers and sellers are actually at and how this how these levels are changing every second throughout the day. So Bookmap shows you support and resistance levels that you'd never otherwise see and really helps you get a gauge of where the money is actually flowing in the market. So if you guys don't already use Bookmap, definitely check it out. It's that first link in the description in the comments down below. If you do want to try it out, you will save using our link. But uh, Bookmap, like I always say, is like x-ray vision, but for the stock market. Exactly, and I know I've been really watching AMD on the book map a ton lately. You can see this huge 140 resistance overhead. There is 163 thousand shares ready to be sold at 140 there's just a ton stacked up right at that level so make sure you're keeping your eyes on amd over the next couple days if it ends up breaking 140 that could be pretty huge but at the same time i'm kind of wondering like is this kind of the top for amd will they start coming down at that big resistance but mike it's so good to have book map on your side to see these big levels and man to be able to see 163,000 shares stacked up there is huge. You might see it on the level two as the price gets really close, but you know, whenever you're further away, it's not as enticing, we'll say. There we go. All right, well, guys, we're set for a pretty exciting day in the market tomorrow. Um, you know, obviously, volatility is here. It's increasing. There's a lot of movement going on. So just like we said in yesterday's video, um, being adaptable is the key, right? Uh, the market, just like we saw today, can uh, move in some very big ways very quickly. And having just being adaptable can do you a lot more good than it can do you bad, you can say. Uh, be willing to pivot quickly and, you know, follow the flows, right? It's as simple as that. But, you know, with everything being said, I'm just happy that the market's actually moving now because for a couple of weeks there, it was uh, pretty dang, pretty dang choppy. It actually was, Mike. And I'll say this, a lot of people, they were, you know, really pushing that uptrend during that choppy time. And I'll be honest, it was, I guess it was uptrending, but it wasn't like, the best uptrend ever right but now we're getting that actually nice voluminous movement breaking out above 460 which was the highest of this year in a pretty crazy way so i'm loving it we're already at 470 let's see what we can do tomorrow uh, i'm definitely going to have the bigger stocks like nvidia amd apple netflix and a couple others on watch i will say netflix was a pretty big stock today ran even above 480 i'll be watching this one to push maybe to 500 sometime soon there we go. Again, definitely check out Bookmap. It's that first link in the description in the comments down below. It's great for short-term trading, and especially if you've been kind of confused lately, it can uh, definitely help out. Besides that, let's have a great rest of the week.